back to Smoky Ribs. In today's episode, I'm going to be doing some pulled pork sandwiches. This is going to be a little bit different than the uh, last video I did on pulled pork sandwiches. I'm going to be doing a coleslaw also using the uh, frog bone product called Spanish Moss uh, White Barbecue Sauce. And that promises to be some really good coleslaw. So you want to hang around for that. I had to get this cook started this morning at the crack of dawn because I have a 10.8 pound Boston butt pork shoulder. That's the upper part of the pork shoulder. And in my experience, it takes a long time to uh, get this to pull pork tender. The last one I did took roughly 12 hours to uh, get to that state. Right now I'm sitting at about 168 degrees internal temp and I've yet to stall out. These things are notorious for hitting a stall at around 165 degrees. Something to do with the moisture on the surface begins to evaporate which causes a cooling effect which would just make that puppy stall out in its tracks. The uh, last one I did it stall for three hours before the temperature started rising to where I could finally get it up to 200 degrees and that's what I'm shooting for here today. I do have a cure for that though. Uh, as you'll hear through some of the footage that I've already shot, I actually contemplated doing a wrap on this to speed up the process, but uh, I decided to do otherwise after chatting with a friend of mine on my Facebook page, my Smoke Ribs Facebook page, he suggested, he's also a Kamado owner, he suggested just to ramp the temperature up to like 350 and that's exactly what I'm going to do. If it does stall out at some point, I'm going to ramp the temp up to about 350 degrees until I start seeing the temperature come up, then I'm going to drop it back off to around 250. And uh, so hopefully we'll have some pulled pork here no later than 5 o'clock. That's when the sun goes down, not that it's sunny today very foggy it's a cool day it's not cold I feel pretty fortunate I'm not blanketed with snow like a lot of the country is so it's really a great day to be doing this so y'all stay tuned and let's get rolling all right I'm gonna let this go about 10 minutes with the lid open and everything wide open bottom dent top dent and uh, I'm gonna go in there and go ahead and get this this Boston butt ready to put on the grill all right I got the Kamado Joe coming up to temp so I'm going to go ahead and put a rub together. We're going to start off with five tablespoons of brown sugar. We got five tablespoons of white sugar. This is about five tablespoons of smoked paprika. You don't have to use smoked. You can use uh, sweet paprika as well. I want this to add the smoky flavor. All right, here is five tablespoons of sea salt. I've got a teaspoon of onion powder. I'm sorry, that's granulated onion. I've got one tablespoon of granulated garlic. This is one tablespoon of black pepper, cracked. This is one teaspoon of uh, white pepper. All right, let's see here. Okay, this is like a Southwest mix. Uh, it's mainly chili powder. It's got a little bit of garlic and onion in it as well. You can just use straight up chili powder if you prefer. This is one teaspoon of cayenne pepper. And this, believe it or not, is one teaspoon of Old Bay seasoning. This is gonna be a good rub. This pork shoulder, Boston butt, whatever you wanna call it, this thing is just beautiful. Look at all this beautiful marbling on here. This thing weighs 10.8 pounds. All right, I'm gonna do it like I always do. I'm gonna take this regular prepared mustard and we're gonna put a nice coat on both sides. From here, you just simply wanna take a lot of this rub and just generously put it all over it. A good coating on this. Just pat that in. Don't be stingy with it. I got it fat side up now, applying some more mustard here. This is just like I said, regular prepared yellow mustard. I've had people ask me why I do this. Well, for one thing, it helps the uh, seasonings have something to adhere to, kind of like a glue. Second off, the vinegar in it helps dry the seasonings into the meat somewhat, gives it some penetration. And uh, you will not detect any mustard flavor, so don't even concern yourself with that. It's just a technique that a lot of people use. Some people use a, an oil. You know, you can use a number of things. I just prefer mustard. 
We're going to put some liberal coat of this rub all over the top. Make sure you get it on the sides as well. Alright, I removed the deflector plate long enough to get some smoke going here. That's applewood. I'm going to place some chunks in various places and as the fire reaches it, it'll uh, produce smoke. Alright, I'm going back in with the deflector plate. If you notice here, I have a drip pan. There's no fluid in that. That's just strictly to help me with my cleanup as this pork butt begins to render and, and start dripping fat. All right, now I'm going to go on with the gray. All right, I got a lot of good smoke pouring out of here. I'm going to go ahead and set this Boston butt on the grate. And we're going to get this lid down. Like I said, this is going fat side up. I know some people go fat side down. But the way I look at it is that fat will help render down into this meat and keep it moist and tender. Especially on this Kamado jug. You don't have to take real big precautions on drying out your meat with these things. That's the beauty of it. It always comes out moist and tender. I'm leveled out at 250 degrees exactly, and that's what we're gonna try to maintain. In about an hour, I'm gonna go ahead and put a probe into the uh, deepest part of this Boston butt so I can monitor the temperature. I've been holding right here at 250 for five hours. This thing has been cooking for five hours. I'm gonna open the lid and take a real quick peek at this and just uh, see how we're doing. I just can't help myself, we gotta look. Oh, yeah. Beautiful. Zoom out a little bit. Mm. All right, down with the lid. I thought I'd go ahead and put this coleslaw together that we're going to be using on the pulled pork sandwiches. What I bought was a uh, mix. This is the uh, purple cabbage, the green cabbage, and the uh, carrot mix. That's all that's in there. And what is going to make this such a very, very special coleslaw is this frog bone Spanish moss, white barbecue sauce. This stuff is incredible. I, I went ahead and uh, poured some over into a bowl. I'm just going to simply pour that in. Just like that. And to that, I'm going to add a little bit of black pepper. I'm also going to add a little bit of sea salt. Just a little. Alright, so you add your seasonings, then you just start tossing this all together. You don't want to get it really, really wet with this, but you do want a good coating all the way around. And I can tell already I don't have near enough. So, with that said, there's plenty more left. I'm back to my wicked ways for good. This is going to be superb on top of this pulled pork. This flavor is incredible. It just spells coleslaw. I don't know, it's like it was made for it. It's actually a white barbecue sauce that can be used on quite a few things, but it really, really works with coleslaw. I bought this at a local place right here in Biloxi called Gala Maltries. And uh, if you're local here, please go see uh, Polia over there at the shop. And if not, you can easily buy this online. I will post the links in the description box. You can order it direct from frogbone.com. I'm going to take a little taste here and see if we need to adjust the seasonings any whatsoever. Mmm. That is really good. I could eat that whole bowl by itself. Mm. A little bit more black pepper. Maybe just a touch more salt, not much. It's, it's really just about perfect. All right, I'm gonna start this all in. I'm gonna put it back in the fridge. Let it sit there and chill until we're ready to put these pulled pork sandwiches together. Oh my goodness, look at that. Look at the bark. Look how tender. 
I'm not even pushing that. It's just falling through on its own. Look at that. Just like butter. That's what you want. Alright, we're ready to come off of here. I'm going to pull these probes up. By the way, I'm sitting right at 200 degrees. And the best part of all of this is I never did hit a stall. This thing is clicked right along the whole time. I'm going to zoom out. I place this over here onto a pan. That is sure enough falling off the bone. Look at that. This has got an incredible bark on it. I don't know if you can see what I was doing, but I took these forks and I moved it over here. There was some that stuck to the grate. That's just how tender it is. Look at that. It's just falling apart tender. We're going to wrap this up in foil. I'm going to let it hang out for probably 30 minutes to an hour. Then we're going to shred it and we're going to make some pulled pork sandwiches. Should've never had that fun. Should've never had that gun. I'm going to go ahead and build my sandwich. And you can bet I'm going to be a little selective on the pieces that I put on here. As you can see, I'm going to grab some of these with this nice bark on there. Oh my God, it's just bursting with flavor. This turned out exceptionally well. This is one of the best pulled porks I think I've ever done. And uh, we're not finished yet. I'm gonna go ahead and pile some more of this on top of here. And I certainly can't take all the credit. That Kamado Joe is just, it's amazing. It just really is. One week I can make bread, the following week I can do something like this with it. And it's like anything you put on it, it's just exceptional from anything else. I don't know how else to put that. Alright, I don't know how many of you watched my last pulled pork video, but uh, on that video I made some East Carolina barbecue sauce, and guess what? I still have some left. So we're going to give that a little bit of dose there, not too much. And now, on top it with some of this coleslaw that we did earlier with the frog bone Spanish moss white barbecue sauce that stuff is killer this slaw is killer there you go I'm fixing to dig in all right also on my plate I have some of these fire and ice pickles I picked these up at Gallimalfrey's also here in Biloxi and they're made by a company called Fat Mama's Fire and Ice Pickles. Man, these things are really, really good. And actually, when I bought them, I didn't realize that they would be a good, a good complement to this sandwich here. But uh, it's going to be perfect. Mm. All right, here we go. We're fixing to dive into this big boy. Hang on. I don't think my mouth is this big. We're going to try it, though. Mmm, 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 mmm. That's it, people. Till next time, smoke the ribs. I'm so out of here, I got to eat. <laughs>